all right welcome to planes over it again and we are continuing with our radio navigation video series so today we're going to discuss uh, radio wave propagation uh, radio wave propagation first I would like to start how it all begins so this is a radio transmitter block diagram that you can see on your screens so there's a power supply which supplies power to the oscillator which oscillates at certain frequency given to it and generates a wave which is your carrier wave so this carrier wave is fed into the modulator wave and the message signal whatever audio video information that is the message is loaded onto the carrier wave this process is called modulation as discussed in the previous video and then since the output is weak so it is get, it gets amplified via the amplifier and it's fed to the antenna which of course uh, radiates the radio wave in different directions okay so properties of radio waves in a given medium radio waves travel at a constant speed okay the velocity of wave changes when passing from medium one medium to another with different refractive index so if it's passing from air to water the velocity will change radio waves are reflected by objects that commensurate the with their wavelength so if there's an object of a certain size the radio wave will reflect from from that object if their wavelengths are similar to the size of the object okay if uninfluenced radio waves travel in a straight line uh, that is uh, in terms if you don't have any electromagnetic uh, you know disturbance around the radio wave they will travel in a straight line that is basically a great circle path on the earth okay now radio spectrum radio spectrum this is what the radio spectrum looks like so VLF, LF, MF, HF, VHF, UHF and SHF, EHF so these are the frequencies so the easiest way to remember is just to first remember this and then just write 3 to 30, 30 to 300, 300 to 3000, then again 3 to 30, 30 to 300, 300 to 3000, 3 to 30, 30 to 300. Starts with kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz. Okay, so VLF, LF, MF, HF, very high frequency, ultra high frequency, super high frequency, extremely high frequencies. So there are different usage of different frequencies which we shall discuss in the upcoming video series. Alright, so this is about the radio spectrum. Now, there are a few factors that affect propagation which I feel is beyond the scope of this uh, lesson but just to name them there's attenuation that happens absorption by various dust particles water vapor then you have uh, static interference because of the static that is there in the atmosphere due weather and power of the transmitter receiver sensitivity directivity of the antenna so these are the few of the factors that affect propagation so which I shall not be going in detail so the propagation paths these are the there are five propagation paths which we will discuss and they're in spread into two types non-ionospheric and ionospheric so these include surface wave space wave ionosphere includes sky wave satellite ducting all right so this is what we will be discussing in this video so surface wave when electronic magnetic electromagnetic waves are radiated from an omnidirectional area some of the energy will travel along the surface of the earth these are called surface waves or ground waves simple as that the range is achievable is dependent on factors like frequency surface on which the wave is traveling and polarization of the wave all right so this is what about is surface wave now there's something called as a space wave a space wave is made up of two parts a direct wave and a ground reflected wave okay at frequencies above vhf and above the radio waves propagate with line of sight and this range is given with this formula range in nautical miles equal to 1.3 into height of the receiver plus height of transmitter in feet okay that's in thousands of feet this will give you the range now direct wave is something where transmitter and receiver is in direct line of sight contact ground reflected wave is something where it gets reflected by the ground okay now what happens is direct wave you have to be in line of sight so an aircraft which is somewhere here it will not be able to receive the transmission of this antenna because it's not in the range of this line of sight of this radio wave and space waves are line of sight properties okay so that's about space wave so we have discussed surface wave which is along the surface then you have space wave these both mind you are by the way non ionospheric methods of propagation now we'll talk about ionospheric propagation 
So just to give you a quick uh, recap, ionosphere extends from 60 kilometers to about about 1500 kilometers. Due to such heights and and the strength of solar radiation, gaseous atom atoms are widely dispersed and in ion state basically. So these ions help in propagation of radio waves over long distance because these have they have reflection properties. So ionization is not linear with altitude but actually varies and that forms discrete layers. So these layers look something like this. So now the interesting part about these layers are on a winter day you will have DEF1 and F2 but on a summer night or a winter night you will D will disappear and they will have only E and F layers. On a summer day D, E, F1 and F2. This F2 has risen up beyond 400 kilometers is because of the increase in the heat on a summer day. So the ionization levels have increased and the particles are more excited and they are they have achieved energy levels which take them beyond 400 kilometers. So this is the reason you have such split. Now this plays, this layers of the ionosphere play a very important role because uh, this de decides the ionization level in the ionosphere and hence the reflectivity of the wave that will sky wave which I shall discuss in the next coming few minutes. Now this structure gives stable conditions during day and night but around dusk and dawn the ionosphere is in transitional state causing excessive interference and disruption. So it's important to know during the day and the night it's pretty uh, stable but during the dusk and dawn where the transition is happening happening from the night to the day these layers coming and going hence there's some interference and disruption okay so this is how it works now i will explain how the sky wave is actually working so now the sky wave is something so where you have a transmitter here as you can see tx if a transmitter is transmitting all the way if it passes a critical angle okay where it passes a critical angle where total internal refraction occurs then the wave returns to the surface so this waves will actually just pass through and they are called escape rays so at a certain point the transmitter will reach a wave at which a critical angle exists which will cause the ionized layer that's in the ionosphere to reflect the wave back to the Earth. So this is called the first sky wave or the critical ray and that angle with the vertical or the basically the vertical of the antenna or the normal to the surface is called your critical angle and thereafter all the waves shall reflect back. So this is the first wave that comes back so that's the critical angle. Okay so this is very important for you to know what critical angle is because this is a very uh, commonly asked question. Okay. And this is the skip distance where this is distance between the transmitter and the first point on earth where the wave has returned. So that is skip distance. All right. Now what happens uh, this okay this diagram talks about something called as a dead space. So from the point where the surface wave is totally attenuated. So this is the surface wave. So of course if there is a transmitter there is going to be a surface wave. Okay, wherever the sky waves occur in lower frequencies, LF, MF and HF frequency bind, there will be some surface waves present. So that wave is going to travel to some distance. Okay. And beyond that distance and to this point where the first wave is returned, there's something called as a dead space and there will be no detectable signal in the dead space. So this is what is important about the definitions of surface wave, dead space, sky distance. Now this, this uh, sky wave depends on various factors, the propagation of sky wave. It depends on ionization intensity. So the, if more, ionize, more ionization is happening because of various reasons, say solar flare or heat in the atmosphere, more ionized particles exist. So the reflection will take place as at a given frequency the ionization will increase and the refraction also by the radio wave will also increase. So they effectivity of the whole system will increase so it will take at a small uh, so if your ionization is high the critical angle will be reduced because the wave will reflect at a lower angle itself okay so this will increase the range uh, and dead space will also decrease now next what happens uh, say let's say effect of frequency 
the higher the frequency the lower is your range because higher frequencies will become escape rays because they will have so much energy that they cannot they will overcome the ionization and they will continue straight ahead into space so higher the frequency less is the range or the sky wave basically won't return so height of the layers also affect obviously so as you i just explained in this diagram so height of the layer if the layers are higher so the reflection reflectivity also will be affected all right and uh, so these are the definitions that i just wanted to give give it to you guys for you to note it down so critical angle the angle the wave makes with the vertical at the transmission point is called the critical angle basically when the that's the angle where the first sky wave returns okay so beyond that it will become escape rays and uh, all the angles that are below critical angle the wave sky waves will return then you have skip distance the distance between the transmitter and the point on surface wave where the first sky wave returns is called the skip distance dead space is the area after the surface wave and the point of reception of the first sky wave is called dead space so that's all about uh, radio propagation and uh, radio propagation theory there's something called as ducting that i uh, had mentioned uh, here as you can see ducting now ducting is a phenomena that is related to vlf that is a very low frequency and uh, this happens that at low frequency the surface of the earth and the lower edge of the ionosphere act as a wave guide and this actually channelizes the radio wave to around the earth with very little loss of power so this is called ducting uh, but uh, there are no civilian equipments that are in the vlf band and uh, hence i don't uh, think it's uh, important to discuss ducting but you should just know that it happens in the vlf and um, it can actually circumnavigate the whole planet so that's about ducting and satellite is something that we will discuss in a uh, different uh, uh, module altogether so that's about uhf and shf so i hope uh, this is all uh, clear and i thank you guys for watching this video subscribe to my youtube channel and like the facebook page for regular updates give this video a thumbs up if you like this video do not forget to share it with your friends comment below if you have any doubts and you can always hit me on these links cheers and happy landings guys have a great day take care bye bye